Now, today we are asking, are comedy shows sexist? The MP Nadine Dorries says, have I got news for you? Is too vicious for most female guests and says that she has turned down several requests to be on the programme. The panel show has had only one female politician as a host, while there have been 10 male politicians take up the role. To talk more about this now, we have feminist and writer for The Metro, Rebecca Reed, and comedian Kate Smurthwaite. Don't know why I call you a feminist. All women are feminists. Shouldn't have just pointed it out. But yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you are too. We all are, in fact. Um, now, this has sparked a really interesting debate, Kate. I'll come to you first. As a comedian, mm -hmm. Would you go on Have I Got News For You? Can you understand oh, women's reluctance too? Yes, indeed. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yes, here's my CV. No, I've written for the show um, and I would absolutely love uh, to go and be on it. And I, 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 I think it does women a sort of disservice to suggest that, oh, it's just tough and women can't come. Because, of course, women, you know, women are all very different. There are lots mm -hmm. of women who would love to get into that tough environment. I'm absolutely one of them. And there are lots of people, men and women, as uh, Quentin Letts points out uh, in his column today, saying, well, actually, it's pretty tough and I'm not sure that I really want to be there. It, comedy shows can be like that. I think we have to look at this at a slightly more, it's not a straightforward issue, mm. is what I would say. Sexism is a very complicated thing in our society. So absolutely, you go on there as a politician, you're going to get an absolute bashing. We know that. Uh, that's the fun of the show. That's why we watch it. That's why we love it. And politicians know they're going mm. to get that when they agree to go on the but show. There's a difference sometimes, I think, in the way that male politicians and female politicians are treated. So somebody like Boris Johnson goes on there, he gets absolutely mercilessly ribbed and um, and he laughs it off and it's not really a big issue and his role in politics doesn't change mm -hmm. and whatever. Whereas you get a female politician, they get caught out on a tricky question, they get made to look a little bit stupid and it comes back to haunt them again and again and again. And it's, it's, I don't think it's a question of women being too scared to do it. I think it's a question of women being aware of the consequences which are much harsher that, for them if they don't do a really, really brilliant job. Yeah, that's quite interesting, Rebecca. It feeds into the bigger picture, doesn't it, that female MPs as a matter of fact, have it tougher than their male counterparts. You look at the amount of female MPs that get trolled and bullied mercilessly online, on social media. Does that bigger picture lead to their reluctance to go on the show, do you think? It's completely true. It's, um, it's a really, really unfair double standard that as a woman working particularly in politics, but in a lot of industries, you don't just have to be as good as the blokes, you have to be better. Mm. And that is something that I completely agree with. I th uh, to, to be fair, though, I don't, I'm not saying I agree with Nadine Dorries. It's not that it's too vicious for women. That's a very unfair... Too vicious and too abrasive, very, very, like, I hate that because that's the kind of, like, girls need to sit in the, in the quiet room at the back with a nice cup of tea while the boys get pissed. You mm. can't... I don't, I, I don't condone that. What, however, the treatment of women is different and comedy is sexy. That the whole, I think the whole comedy industry is sexist, but it's not that it's too vicious, it's that it doesn't treat women fairly. Yeah, Kate, that's quite interesting. Um, widening it out to other panel shows mm -hmm. you might watch, uh, whether it be um, 8 Out of 10 Cats or Celebrity Juice, they have female panellists on the show, and they could be mm -hmm. comedians, they could be reality stars, but they are often the subject of shall we say, tasteless humour. Mm -hmm. They're often the, the ridiculed. Oh, Do totally. we need to change that dynamic? So, that, so firstly, there's an issue where you get this terrible situation where you get a show and there's, like, five men and one, and one woman, woman yeah. which already it means, oh, what do you think about education? What do you think about politics? What do you think about defence? And then they turn to the woman and go, tell us about housework and relationships. Mm. Um, then you get a situation where the men they pick will be comedians and the woman they pick uh, is maybe a presenter or, you know, somebody who's famous for being attractive. Reality TV star is the General. Reality. So TV already style, your education yeah. level is lower. You haven't spent 20 years honing your routine on the circuit. Mm -hmm. You're there in a tight dress because you've been on TV for half an hour. And that's a really unfair setup. And then it's funny, interesting you should mention Celebrity Juice. I literally cannot watch it um, because so many of the times they turn to the woman and the joke is, is very graphic and sexual about her. And, and that would almost be fair enough if the men got those jokes as well. But instead, it feels like they're there to be the butt of the sexual jokes um, while the guys are there to be a part of the rest of the jokes. And I think it's, it's not a question of there being one, you know, we just need a few tough women to dive in. What we need is at every level to sort of start going, what are the barriers? How can we make this different? And I think there are panel shows, more, you know, newer ones that are coming out, people like uh, Sue Perkins um, doing shows, where the they've Nash got a situation... as well. Right, where they've got regular team captains, mm. regular panellists, regular guests who are women. And you look at Have I Got News For You, well, Ian and Paul are fixtures. 
So in order to create a balanced panel where it's not just one woman, you've actually got to then fill all the guest spots with women, basically. In or at least two of them. It, yeah, but you, exactly. But you need to have, realistically, it's not fun as a woman to watch a show where there's one woman and she is being ripped to shreds at every single question. Mm. It's not enjoyable. That's why I don't watch these shows. But there are some women that do watch it and don't mind it. I know a lot of women that are massive fans of Celebrity Juice. Which is really, really confusing to me <laughs> because that's not a show that likes you or supports you or or wants to or would ever have any of us on there because it's because we wouldn't fit the mold. It's not a kind show for women, and it's a kind of I think that's a sort of internalised mis misogyny thing. I have to say. But it's I think the way forward is that we have more shows. You know, and I, I love Ian and Paul. I think they're brilliant on Have I Got News for You. Of course mm. they are. They've done 53 series. Have I practiced anything for 53 mm. series? Believe me, by the end I'd and be astounded. And it's a sink or swim scenario because if you go on there for your first time, whether you're a man. Or a woman. If you don't cut it in the first show, you won't be invited back. But also, but you if get we had it out, the, the, if you watch the edit of, for instance, um, "Would I Lie to You," a lot of the time, women get two lines in the whole show because they clearly haven't cut the mustard, and that's really embarrassing. And I know female and male comics who've been on these shows and said they don't want to go back because they said loads of funny things in the record and they don't feel like it made it to the edit and they feel like it wasn't a good representation of them. But I think the way forward is let's look at these shows and let's have more female presenters, let's have more female team captains. Let's just, you know, keep building this. And, you know, the day that somebody turns around and says, oh, I don't want to be on this panel show, it feels like an old girls' club, <laughs> then we'll know that we've, we've hit some sort of parity. And, um, and it, it's actually fine if there's an occasional show that does have all guys, provided there's an occasional show mm. that has all women. And overall, yeah. we're kind of balanced. Kate, do you think that the, the female comic is actually on the rise. We're talking about a reluctance for uh, female politicians to go on shows like Have I Got News For You. Mm -hmm. But in terms of female comedians, you feel that they're on the rise? I'm thinking of Rachel Paris on The Mash Report, who's getting huge uh, acclaim at the moment. Now, there does I, seem to so be great. I am the biggest fan of Sarah Millican. I'm the biggest fan of uh, Rachel Paris. Lots and lots of these women are brilliant friends of mine. Mm -hmm. But I am absolutely against the notion that, oh, women are starting to make it in comedy now. They're mm -hmm. starting to get through. Go back, you know, decades, and the biggest comedian in the world was Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. For a decade in this country, the most popular popular comedian was Victoria Wood. The idea that women are now breaking into comedy, that we're sort of gathering up the crumbs from under the table. Are they maybe women just doing it differently? Women have always been brilliant at comedy. Are they maybe doing it differently in terms of they are a bit more, how can I put it, a bit more edgy? Would that I be think fair? comedy in general has gotten more edgy, yeah. um, I, and I think that's great. And I think mm. we should. But when I say edgy, I mean I don't. I, I'm actually against those shows that seem to just set out to offend for the sake mm. of um, attracting a bit of cheap publicity. But I do think that comedians should be saying interesting and challenging things when they get the chance. Um, and I think that's a general trend in comedy. But I also think um, that we, sh we should sort of step away from this idea that women are new in comedy and we're just starting to find our feet. We've been there for a really long time. And we're great at it. The question shouldn't be how are we breaking through. The question should be where's our 50% of the pie we're but, ready for this but all I completely agree with you but the only thing I would say is I, whenever I go to stand up I only ever go to things with women and inevitably somebody will say to me at the bar oh I don't usually find women funny but she was actually quite good and I hear that literally I heard that last week oh, I get and that every time I go on stage women come up to me afterwards women and, say aren't, that. and people are still saying women aren't funny and that is honestly terrifying because as you say literally decades of women being hilarious and it's interesting isn't it because we are providing quite a lot of material for Have I Got News For You for any upcoming <laughs> episodes they may have. So we're maybe playing right into their hands. Free to put us on. I would yeah. gladly go back on the show and defend uh, the things that I've said on here. Like, we can create... This would be the most meta show yeah. they've ever done, where they dissect the way that we've dissected them. And we'll go well, on. Tell you what, if they have all three of us, that'll make it a 60%... Uh, yeah, you can host it. I, so yeah, see, you host. I, yeah, I would, rule myself, out. I would rule myself out on the fact that I'm not funny. So you, there you, you go. You that's my guess now. Because you do all the work. the autocue. Yeah. We'll do the hard work. Yeah. Okay, we'll all right. I'm sure the presenters of Have I Got News For You <laughs> say they do much more than read the autocue. Um, thank you both very much, ladies. Uh, Rebecca Reed and Kate Smurthwaite. Uh, is comedy sexist? I think we've, uh, you know, answered that one. Yep. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Now, uh, still to come here on Sunrise, we're going to be meeting the dad who's been given, uh, giving his children a run for their money on social media. If you can't beat them, join them.